coming up on today's show, the production Audi e-tron finally breaks its cover and has its big reveal event in San Francisco, Tesla's Model 3 aces all of its crash tests, and the Jaguar I-Pace drives through the Channel Tunnel. Now, these stories and more coming next. Happy Saturday, folks. Yes, that's not a mistake. We're shifting TEN to Saturdays now and hopefully going seven days a week with our content. You will have to wait a little longer for your roundup show, but I hope this change will give some of you more time to enjoy it. We're starting today's show with Monday night's big reveal of the 2019 Audi e-tron SUV, a car that's already begun production in Europe and should be hitting the roads in the next six to 10 months depending on where you live. Most of the reveal wasn't exactly a surprise since Audi has been drip feeding us info for ages, but we did learn about two new cool things with this upcoming model. First, it will be the first production car to offer side view cameras rather than mirrors in markets where such things are allowed. And second, it'll charge at up to 150 kilowatts from a compatible CCS charging station. I've made a separate video on it, so click the link above my head if you want more info. Tesla's third mass-produced electric car, the Model 3, has just aced all of its official crash tests at the hands of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Gaining full five-star ratings across the board for all of the variants currently available, the Model 3 continues Tesla's exemplary crash test record and takes into account not only structural safety, so actual impact performance, but also the presence of Tesla's autopilot-derived safety systems. Well done, Tesla! U.S. bus manufacturer Proterra has just announced the successful close of a 155 million U.S. dollar investment round, with Daimler, Tao Capital and G2VP all making major investments. Proterra's long-range electric buses are among some of the best in the public transit industry, but Daimler's investment in the firm will open up a joint partnership between Daimler's Thomas-built school bus division and Proterra. This could lead to your children's next school bus being all electric rather than diesel. BMW has already been at the forefront of working to ensure the materials it uses for its lithium-ion batteries are responsibly sourced. This week, it confirmed it wants to expand its ethical battery sourcing, adding that it's looking to work with other automakers to do the same. In addition, BMW says it's looking for partners to work with on its autonomous vehicle development, sharing costs and developing an industry alliance to standardize autonomous vehicle parts. As the first Jaguar I-Pace electric cars have started to hit dealer forecourts in Europe, Jaguar has announced the Jaguar Electrifies experience across major cities in the US. Set to run from October 3rd through October 7th, Jaguar will be touring the I-Pace across the US and holding simultaneous launch events with dealerships around the country to give customers a chance to test the I-Pace on road and on a closed autocross course. You can find more information at jaguarusa.com. Remember that supposed interest from the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund that would have allowed Tesla to go private? Well, although Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Tesla's board decided in the end that wasn't the way the company should go, Lucid Motors has stepped into Tesla's place, securing a one billion US dollar investment from the Saudi Arabia PIF. Lucid has yet to bring a vehicle to market, but said this week that the investment will help it complete engineering and testing of the Lucid Air, its first production luxury electric car. It's stupidly fast, promises autonomous capabilities and over-the-air updates, and Lucid said it will be built in Casa Grande, Arizona in the not-too-distant future. Polestar, the luxury performance arm of Volvo, which was recently rebranded as a plug-in only brand, has published details of how it wants to develop a new approach to car ownership for its first US customers when its first vehicle, the Polestar 1 plug-in hybrid sports coupe, launches next year. Rather than offer traditional finance or lease packages, Polestar says it wants to offer customers a subscription service that covers everything from insurance and maintenance to the actual vehicle cost. As part of this, it wants to offer pick up and drop off of customers' cars, ending the days of waiting in a service center reception while your car is being worked on. A Volkswagen has been pushing pretty hard in the last few weeks in the world of EVs showcasing this week for the first time the all-electric MEB platform that all of its upcoming ID electric cars will be built on. 
Last week, I told you it was working to convert its first factory to all electric operation next year, producing upwards of 100,000 electric cars per year from that facility by 2020. Now it's confirmed it's looking to build a dedicated US factory for North American EVs, establishing a brand new plant somewhere in the US by 2022. Where? Well, it didn't say, but I'm guessing Chattanooga is a good chance because it already has production facilities there. OK, let's get on with some short shorts. News headlines we can't cover in depth, but ones you can read about by following the links in the show notes below. The Kia e Nero, Kia's all-electric variant of the Nero SUV, has received an official European range rating of 485 kilometres, that's 301 miles, on the WLTP test cycle. This is an optimistic figure, so expect less in the real world. In an effort to ensure optimum user experience at its supercharger stations, Tesla has increased idle fees for non-charging cars. It's also begun rolling out a software update to let customers who don't have free supercharging pay for their charging directly from their car's touchscreen interface. Hyundai has revealed the first pictures of a hydrogen fuel cell electric truck it wants to bring to market next year. While not detailed in the press release, it does look to be around a 2010 affair, so it will most likely be used for mid-range and city delivery duties. Sticking with hydrogen, Toyota has confirmed that it will be building 10 more hydrogen fuel cell Class 8 tractor units for use at the Port of Los Angeles. Working with truck company Kenworth, Toyota says the trucks will be operated in and around the port and will be bringing two new large 100% renewable hydrogen filling stations online to support them. Harking back to the days of its classic 508, Peugeot has unveiled the e-legend concept car. Fully electric and fully autonomous, it's got sporty looks that remind me of several different American muscle cars, but it's unclear if it will ever make it into production. Tesla has received approval from the FCC to begin producing a car-shaped key fob for the Model 3. Up to this point, owners had to use the credit card-like RFID key card or the Tesla smartphone app to get into their car. Like many other automakers attending the commercial vehicle show in Hanover this week, Renault has unveiled an all-electric cargo van called the EZ Pro. It's fully autonomous, all-electric, but if I'm honest, reminds me a lot of the cargo concept Toyota unveiled at CES 2017. Following successful tests in Sweden and Germany, Italy has announced a section of its A35 road will become a 60 km long e-highway, allowing hybrid trucks fitted with overhead pantographs to operate in all-electric mode while travelling along the road. BMW and Daimler, who announced earlier this year that their two car share services would merge, took one step closer to that reality this week by announcing that the jointly owned mobility company would be based in Berlin, Germany. We still don't know, though, what that company will be called. Volkswagen was also in Hanover this week and unveiled a cargo-carrying version of its ID Buzz concept called the ID Buzz Cargo. Interestingly, the concept boasts only a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack but 150 kilowatt charging, which is probably a good move for an inner city delivery concept. Alongside unveiling the e-legend this week, the PSA Group has confirmed that it will be offering an electric version of every new car model it introduces from 2019 onwards. Existing models don't count, but PSA says the switch to electric is coming. Elon Musk and Tesla is now reportedly under investigation from the US Justice Department over those now infamous privatization tweets. This is in addition to the alleged SEC investigation, but neither department publicly comment on active investigations as a matter of standard procedure. And that's your short shorts. I hope you enjoyed them and there will be more next week. This week, Porsche unveiled the new 800 volt superfast charging stations that have been designed to use with its upcoming Porsche Taycan. It's calling them electric pit stops. The stations are striking in their design and are designed with a three-piece methodology in mind. There's a box for all of the transformer circuitry, a box for the cooling system required for such high power transfers, and the actual stall itself, which can be away from the power electronics, a bit like Tesla's. There's also an option to include batteries, so 350 kilowatt charging stations can be installed in locations where the power supply isn't up to the 36 kilovolts required for direct grid to vehicle charging. Following the completion of successful trials, Tesla has confirmed that it will be opening up its own accident repair centers for Tesla cars. The hope is that they will be far faster than third-party repair facilities and, because Tesla lets its centers have a full stock of spares, something it doesn't let third parties do, it probably will be, and cheaper too. 
I've made a video on this one, so follow the link above for more info. The Fiat Chrysler Group hasn't exactly been known for its EV production in recent years, but rumours are flying around that it's looking to potentially bring the all-electric autonomous minivan Chrysler Portal to market. Supposedly designed for millennials, this six-seat minivan was unveiled at CES 2016 as a concept car. FCA isn't confirming or denying it, but past statements made by the late Sergio Marchione about replacing the Dodge Grand Caravan with a new vehicle does seem to give some credence to this one. And finally, the Channel Tunnel is either one of the best or worst things about travelling between the UK and mainland Europe, offering car and passenger rail services under the English Channel. Usually, you need to travel through it on a train, but Jaguar has just sent its all-new iPACE electric SUV through the Channel Tunnel service tunnels to prove that you can drive directly from London to Brussels on a single charge. I don't mind tunnels, but I'm not sure I'd want the monotony of driving that really long one if I was behind the wheel. The channel is long, like 31 miles long. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and support us using the links below. And if you want to show your love without spending any money, give us some social media love and keep the buzz buzzing. But before I go, I want to give a shout out to two idiots in a Tesla. That's two Brits who are traveling around Europe in a Tesla to raise money for cancer research. They leave on their journey next week, so make sure you follow them on the link below to give them some love and hopefully your money. In the last year, cancer has hit my family three times, so I would personally love it if you could help these guys out. Meanwhile, stateside, I'll be joining my buddies at the League of Extraordinary Floofs and donning a fursuit to take part in the Portland Metro Walk for ALS. We've raised about $455 thus far, so help us push it a little higher before Sunday's walk. And again, thanks from us to you if you decide to donate. Okay, that really is it. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.